one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, makes sense. So here we have a bunch of fine, smoothest plastics here from shapeways.com. They come, you know, relatively clean, but uh, these smoothest plastics are printed on a bed, <coughs> on a bed of wax. And a lot of time the wax is inside the uh, actual pivot points that I create, for like on the semi truck here. And if you try to twist it, the wax is stronger than the plastic and just break the pin off. So it's always good to actually clean these with some simple green. You know, simple green's great because <laughs> it's non toxic. You know, the vapors aren't going to kill you, hopefully. Maybe not, I don't know. But it's better than, you know, harsh chemicals, that's for sure. Okay, so we're gonna put a bunch of these in. I leave these uh, models on the sprue because a lot of times my sprue piece is actually um, holding the movable turret in place. And if I, in the past, I clipped them off and then I'd lose the turret or the small part that's supposed to move. Not all my models have moving parts, but uh, if I can do it without it making looking too ridiculous, uh, I'll try to do it. All right, so there's a bunch of uh, models there, and simple green, and this is an ultrasonic cleaner I got off uh, Amazon. I think it was like 35 bucks or something like that. You want to get one that has a metal cleaning tray, I think, because I feel like it it's going to vibrate better. I'm not an ultrasonic cleaner expert, but... Seems like all the professional ones have a metal basin. All right. Okay, I had to uh, turn off this thing because uh, I, you can't hear me with this thing vibrating. The microphone takes picks up more of this than my voice. Another thing I want to warn you, this is my second ultrasonic cleaner. The previous one had a no fan in it. So I used to run this thing like... 600 seconds repeatedly, you know, once it stopped, it just hit it again and again and again. And inside this thing, there's an electronics board with a bunch of heat sinks. Those heat sinks, one of the heat sinks literally fell off the electronics board and started to melt through the bottom plastic because it just got too hot in there because I was over abusing it. Uh, the reason why I have to run it so long is sometimes if you have a really long part that's supposed to move, that means there's a bunch of wax holding those two, those two parts together from the printing process. And my gaps are like 0.15 millimeters, which is really tight. So it might take several, it might take a few days to ultrasonic clean all that wax out of those tiny, tiny gaps that are very long. Like say uh, the boom of a crane, <coughs> the boom of a crane, for instance, you know, would have a, a very long extension. So um, yeah, the, I, I will run this thing continuously. So this is my being my second one. This time around, I bought one that has a fan. There's supposed to be a fan down here. I can't show it to you because I already filled it up with simple green. So I'm hoping that the fan will actually keep this thing cool enough to continuously run it and run it. But if you if you get one that doesn't have a fan, you might want to just let the thing cool down a little bit. Another thing I have to warn you about is if you do repeatedly run this, this liquid gets pretty warm from all the vibration. And if you run it repeatedly, like three, two or three cycles, three or four cycles at a time, this liquid will actually get kind of painful to touch. It's not boiling, but it's very hot. Uh, I've never actually had a problem with this smoothest plastic in the hot, hot cleaning fluid. It's never warped anything or anything like that, but it's actually just hard, you know, difficult to actually touch with your hands. But I do feel because this wax here on these uh, pieces, you know, wax melts at a higher temperature, right? So I think the the cleaning fluid, if it is warm, is probably having an easier time loosening up the wax that's on the, the bodies themselves. So, uh, you know, some of these bodies, you'll see there's, de there's definitely a lot of wax on the inside of this semi-truck. You can see the fluid in there. That cloudiness is the wax used to build support the plastic as it prints. I've noticed that, you know, it, it's helpful if you take a toothbrush and uh, run it over. But this is, be mindful, if you're using like, 
a small scale like me, these are one 400 scales, the small scale I, I build my models out of. So you'll see like on this semi truck here, if I used a really strong toothbrush and I rub really hard, I might break that off, right? That thing's like a millimeter wide. So this is an ultra soft toothbrush and it, it helps, but it doesn't get all the wax off. Sometimes like uh, on the windows where I'll actually use a toothpick you know, I'll actually scrape a toothpick around in there because I know I'm going to use like a black Sharpie to color in those windows later. And, you know, if you use a Sharpie over wax, it's going to clog up the Sharpie marker. So the less wax, the better. If you're not going to, if you're using a, a bigger scale, you know, my models can print to much bigger scales, then you probably don't need to worry so much because you'll probably just use a paintbrush and pen and a paint, airbrush, paint basically. But since I actually use Sharpies, I want to get the wax out because it'll just clog up the Sharpie. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Uh, also, if you have a bigger model, you might want to, you could probably get away with a harsher or a stiffer toothbrush to help knock that, knock that away because all the parts will be bigger and there's less chance of a, a brush bristle knocking things off. But yeah, since Simple Green isn't toxic, you know, it might be helpful to... Uh, brush some pieces off or scrape them off it or whatever it might be all right so another thing uh right now it's just gone through one cycle so the simple green is quite clear but uh, eventually even though these models looked pretty clear when i put them in there there is a lot of wax you don't see you know even though these are transparent almost there's there's a bunch of residual wax so I, I've become accustomed to seeing this entire bath become milky green, like a, like a matcha green tea beverage. So sometimes it'll get so cloudy, I'll actually dump this out and pour in a new one, and it'll still get cloudy again. So, But that's actually a good thing, because that means all that wax is in the liquid you're throwing away instead of on the model. If the wax is too uh, thick on the model, at least on this uh, a scale like 1 400 when you paint it it's going to paint over the wax and you'll see the ridges left behind from the the wax process there again bigger scale maybe it won't make a difference but uh with these tiny 1 400s you know everything makes a difference because they are so small so all right well that's it for the cleaning process now let's start it up again can't, you really can't hear me, right? This thing is loud. But yeah, those little vibrations are uh, getting all that wax out. Oh, one other thing I want to mention. This liquid will evaporate. So it's always good to cover this. Unless you want to just continually dump more and more Simple Green in there. But if you, you know, cover it, it'll actually just steam up and drip back down in there and be useful again. So I've run it for uh, three 600 second cycles, 600 seconds, I guess, 10 minutes, right? So 30 minutes have gone by, you can see it's all condensated, preserving that simple green solution. And you'll see it's getting cloudy. So I'm going to let that uh, go a few more cycles more until it gets really cloudy. Maybe two more cycles. And then I'm actually going to clip them off, the sprues, but I'll show you how. I'm not going to clip them off entirely. And then I'm also going to throw in my large models. You notice I didn't mix any large models in with this batch. Uh, the reason why is if I put this model in here and I start fishing around trying to find a small piece, I'm afraid I'll break the small piece off when it hits a large model like this. Not necessarily the models vibrating against each other. It's just that when I fish around for a piece, trying to dig them out, I think the bigger model is going to obviously win a collision. All right, so let's run five complete cycles now. You can see how cloudy it is. So again, when you're fishing through that cloudiness to find models, you might break something. So for instance here, this one, look how thin those arms are, right? So I'm afraid you don't want to mix heavy models with this. All right, so you can, this is really hot now. Like it's, I don't want to leave my hand in that fluid it's so hot you know it reminds me of like hot tea or something uh, but now if you have a large model it might be a good time to actually start using a toothbrush to clean them off 
but it's obviously unwieldy to do so like this. So first thing I'm going to do is actually remove these so I can actually clip them apart from each other. But let me show you one as an example, this one, I guess. Uh, when I sell these, they're usually in, at 400 scale, five pieces. You just have five identical models. I'm not going to do custom orders like this. I don't have time to do that. You would have to pay me 60 bucks an hour to go ahead and do something like I'm not even going to do it. Forget it. I have better things to do. But uh, anyways, you'll see I just basically clip between the, the models. And the, I leave the sprue on because that's what I clip onto when I airbrush these things later. Uh, I'm trying to find one with a turret. Mm, sorry, this one doesn't have a turret. Let me find this. Maybe this next one. Yeah, this one. So this is a, some sort of military vehicle with a turret on it. And the sprue itself, not sure if you can see, is actually part of the base of the turret. So instead of losing this turret once the wax falls out of it, this sprue keeps it in place. You know, I can't lose the turret because it is trapping it. So that's another reason why I want to keep this sprue on here. But mainly it's because of when I used my alligator clips. Hold on, here I got one. When uh, After these get rinsed off with water and dried, this is how I airbrush them. You know, I just hold this and airbrush it. And then I'll move the turret around sometimes. Or sometimes after I know that this belongs with this, uh, I will remove the turret and paint that separately. Well, I guess I'll get to that when I do some painting. So what I'm going to do is just continue to remove these because uh, I don't want to throw away this green stuff yet. But I know I want to probably separate some of these models now. And so, yeah, ooh, that is hot. I just ran it for like two straight cycles. Whew. That is definitely hot. Ooh, so hot. <sighs> yep. So you might want to let it cool down. I will also note, <coughs> oh, see that semi truck that I showed at the very start, the uh, the trail. Oh, that's a bus. Sorry, I thought that was the back end of the semi. Oh yeah, it did separate. See, here's the peg of that semi truck trailer, and it was trapped by the wax. So the uh, tractor part of it somewhere in here. So where is it? Sometimes you yeah you just gotta grab it with your fingers because the toothbrush. I guess if you had a small net from like, from like uh, aquarium fishing. All right, so there's the tractor, and you'll see the hole there. So the the wax came out, and the two pieces separated. So that's one of the main reasons. But you'll see maybe, well, it might be hard to tell, but well, I'll maybe take some of this hot simple green, go over it, because there's no sensitive thin parts on this particular model. But I find that, you know, this self-defined brush isn't very, doesn't work as well as it could because it's uh, simply too soft. So for the windows, again, I, I want to use like a toothpick. And I'm just going to go around in the recess here of the toothpick, scrape it off. I'm still going to bathe these again because, you know, I need to, now that I've loosened the wax in these recesses, I need the ultrasonic cleaner to knock it all smooth. So when I use a Sharpie later on, it won't get clogged up with wax. So window, I think, back here. All right. But anyways, while I separate these little models out, oh, I think I felt something else in there. Oh, that's hot. So hot. Uh, there's definitely some a piece in there. Okay, it's a, a spare engine. So I'll take my big models now. And these guys, you know, since they're so large, there's not much fishing around to do. Uh, a lot of my models, the big ones, are hollowed out to save on cost. So in this case, I might flip this over. I think the openings are the landing gear. 
Although, honestly, it doesn't really matter if there's wax on the inside of this thing. Because uh, I'm only going to paint the outside. This one, I'm definitely going to leave this round sprue on because I don't want the landing gear to break. So I won't clip this off until after I paint it. I do think I have to flip it over so it stays submerged. There's a Caterpillar dump truck. Here's a... Uh, a lift for a beluga cargo plane and I made a giant cage around it because that's protecting these little handrails from shipping damage and also damage in here if I accidentally bump it into something so I won't clip this off until it's out painted first or if, if it gets in the way maybe I will clip it off but at least during the cleaning process I want to protect it from you know damage from other models and stuff so yeah I will let these guys go. I uh, thought I'd share some of the clipping process. Uh, so here's a prime example of, you know, keeping the sprue because it's keeping this articulated bus together. And by clipping it wider than the pivot, it is trapping it, right? But be mindful, I don't have that on everything. Like this one, you can see the circle. Once that wax comes out, that turret's going to be a really tiny piece hidden away in that bath. So... Yeah, you gotta be mindful of the extra pieces that you may or may not have on certain models. This one here, you know, I I really just want to have enough to keep the pieces from getting lost, and also uh, not not too much that blocks the alligator clip in the painting process. So this one is being held together by this one, so I'll leave it like that. But like this little train has no moving parts, so I just want to clip off like that. So just enough the the <coughs> excuse me just enough of the sprue, so I can take the alligator clip, you know, and have access to the to the part. Sorry, one four hundred is hard to focus, because if you have too much too much of the sprue when you're airbrushing, it's going to block the the paint from getting where it needs to go. So you want to have as small of a piece possible to keep the paint allow the paint to get everywhere but obviously trap any parts that might move. So again, there's no uh, pivot on this construction vehicle, or I think it's a snowblower. So I don't need to have all this extra sprue. It's gonna just block the paint from the paintbrush or the airbrush. So I'm gonna clip this and clip this side as well. You know, notice I'm using really small electronics clippers. So this plastic is like acrylic, so it's quite brittle. So keep that in mind. It's not very flexible, the smoothest detail. Shapeways does have flexible plastics, but they're not high detail. So at this scale, you know, this is the only way to go. Larger scales, you can get versatile plastic, which is actually difficult to paint, so I wouldn't recommend it. All right, so yeah, just roughing this in. So Star Trek shuttle. Oh, oh, see, accidentally that Batmobile fell off. So now I have nowhere to clip the uh, paint clip to it. So that one I'm going to have to flip over and after it dries and paint it that way. But with the little sprue uh, on the alligator clip, it makes life a whole lot easier. But yes, you see the Batmobile? I'm going to have to paint it upside down first. Like that. And then just paint it. And then once that dries, then I'll have to flip it over. And, and try to paint it on that side you know it's just more work so that's another reason why I, I keep the sprues on this like sci-fi ship I'm gonna keep all of that because these legs are so spindly you know if I drop it accidentally or something like that I don't want them to break off and because the legs are so spindly I'm not too worried about the clip you know getting in the way of stuff see if I just clip it like that the paints gonna get where it needs to get right it's gonna go where it needs to. This isn't actually blocking the view so much. The, the the path, not the view. Okay.
And after a bunch of painting and uh, Sharpie markering, I've detailed these. Uh, so I also built some stands for some of the flying ones. This is just crazy glued a toothpick for this uh, Star Wars Rebel ship because it has a big mount hole there. Uh, it's hard to do on camera, sorry. These other two, whoop. <sighs> maybe I need a bigger base. <laughs> this little predator is on a so uh, needle for like sewing. Same with uh, this little Star Wars land cruiser. Land speeder thing. Okay, anyways, I'm going to do a different video for all these guys, you know, where you can see them spin and stuff like that. But uh, the, the hardest part about these things seems to be getting the wax off. Even though I simple greened in a ultrasonic cleaner a bunch of times, I it's hard to see that wax. So I can tell, like, certain models still have wax on them. And so I actually got a cheap electric toothbrush, one of those rotary kind of like an Oral-B toothbrush, but with uh, AA batteries in it. And that helped out, but actually this one's not so bad. There was one somewhere in here that had, maybe this one. Yeah, all right. See, this is definitely wax, this roughness there. It's too rough, you know. Some roughness is expected, uh, like that kind of roughness there. But that is wax for sure here, where it looks like concrete. But because the wax is tra <coughs> transparent, yeah, I was kind of not as patient because when you do this many models at one time, you lose patience. If you do like five five models at a time, yeah, you're going to be more patient, right? So I guess it's just a, everyone's level of tolerance and uh, mine ran out when I did all these in one batch. <laughs> Took like three, four, five days, three, uh, several days, almost a week. Okay, uh, see you in the next videos when I showcase these. Bye.